Welcome to the swing set. Climb on up. There is always a swing available. On Life on the Swing Set, the podcast, we explore ethically non-monogamous relationships, the pleasures and passions, the promise and pitfalls. We discuss all aspects of ethical non-monogamy in a fun, open, and welcoming fashion with a gleam in our eye, a bounce in our step, our hands down your pants. Ooh, (laughs) sorry, got ahead of myself. We may be biased. In fact, we most certainly are, but we don't sugarcoat and each of us speaks honestly and earnestly about our thoughts, ideas, and experiences throughout our very own Lives on the Swing set. Thanks for swinging by. A while back, though who knows how long because memory is fluid, like sexuality, Ginger, the coiner of terms, suggested Sintrovert and Sextrovert as two leading categories of sexually explorative folk. These modified versions of introvert and extrovert help to remove the stigma attached and suggest that however you embrace your sexuality, you're on the right page by engaging. We invite you to tweet along with us using the hashtag SSPodcast. I'm Cooper Beckett, and tonight I have with me... Hey everybody, it's Ginger. Hello, it's Katie Mack. It's a small, small crew today. Intimate. Intimate, yes. Let's have an intimate discussion, ladies. Ooh, yeah. But before we do, Jen, you have a, an, an announcement of a contest. Yes. Because absolutely. we're trying to do that here and there now. I know. Isn't that fun? It is. I like it. It's it's very fun. I, I feel... I. I feel just occasionally a little bit like either Bob Eubanks or <laughs> Alex Trebek or a hi- hybrid of Bob Eubanks and Alex Trebek. You know, whoever I always think of when people mention Bob Eubanks is Bob Euchre, and he's a little different. He's different. Bob Eubanks. There you go. That's uh, fair. The patriarch so- on Mr. Belvedere, for those not in the know. <laughs> Wow, that is some some wicked deep TV <laughs> trivia right there. I don't wow. think it's the first time I have shouted out to Mr. Belvedere on this podcast. I don't think it. I, don't I think honestly it is. have no idea. So if somebody finds that for me, you'll win something that's not this contest. How about that? <laughs> Find me the, the Mr. Belvedere contest, and you'll win <laughs> a swing set golden ticket. Uh, value and (laughs) result to be defined later. Perfect. However, this contest contest is well-defined. Yes, It is. So we're looking for people, sexy swing setters, to email us at, oh gosh, what do we want to do? Marriage? Marriage at lifeontheswingset.com? Yeah, let's call it that. We're giving away Marriage 2.0 DVDs. Yes, which is awesome. Which is so awesome. Uh, Magna Sullivan has gifted us these DVDs to give away to five awesome swing setters who email us at marriage at life on the swing com and share a little bit of your Genesis story. Share a little bit of what got you started in ethical non-monogamy. And we're not talking about war and peace here. I mean, you know, 200, 300 words tops. And we'd love to actually share excerpts of your stories on the podcast. Yes. So five. So yes, 200, 300 words tops. Well, we're not saying we're going to read them all, okay. but we're going to, uh, all the words, but we're gotcha. going to pick bits and pieces and we're, of, of your genius. <laughs> we're and we're going to read, read some of the words. We're going to read like some of the words. Not we're necessarily word. in the same order you <laughs> yeah, wrote Yeah, we're going to read every other word yeah. and just see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it might be interesting. Might be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> might be both. It probably would be both. But the best thing about all of this is, is people are winning Marriage 2.0 DVDs. Yes. And so, and yeah. If you've seen the movie, you're already winning a little bit. Yes. Because it's awesome. And we, you know, we at the swing said, love the film, love the production behind it, love the cast of it. And if you are one of those people who don't know what, what this Marriage 2.0 thing is that we're talking about, uh, well, you should go back and listen to the episode where we talk about it. But, it's, uh, and then. it's a drama <laughs> with porn in it. 
And it's a really good drama about non-monogamy with really hot porn in it. And Friends of the Swing Set are in it. Uh, Dylan Ryan's in it. Reed Mahalko, Marsha Bazinski, um, Christopher Queen. Ryan, Carol Queen. Yeah. It's, it's a, a veritable smorgasbord of sex-positive people. And one of the hottest uh, DS scenes I've ever seen, Jen. Oh my gosh, yes. With Dylan Ryan in the basement. Man, that was in yep. fucking tense. Yes. So if so you want one. So email us. I want us. one, yes. <laughs> can I win? Can can friends or family of the swing set win? No, Probably I'm reading the not. fine print. I'm yeah. reading the fine print right now. No. I'm oh, sorry. You get a Homer. submission from Anastasia Beaverhausen, it's from me. <laughs> <laughs> well that that name alone might win. <laughs> It was from Will and Grace. That was Karen Walker when she wanted to go incognito. She put on big sunglasses and called herself Anastasia Beaverhausen. (laughs) That's got to be one of the dirtiest things on network television ever. (laughs) I love it. I love it. The Beaverhausen is where they house the beavers, Jen. I don't know if you know that. (laughs) I I was just trying to figure out the word for beaver in German, and I'm thinking it's not beaver. Probably not. <laughs> Although Hausen, I, I, I get it. I don't think beaver? the word house in German is Hausen. Sure. Why not? It sounded more legit than beaver. What if I say Beaverhausen? <laughs> well, there you go. I'm sold. Yeah. You know, I can, I can bring out a little of that purebred German charm that I've got. Right. Yeah. That, that, was, that was definitely German. The word purebred and German need to generally stay far apart. I Agreed. Think, oh, Agreed. Yeah. So before before this episode needs a, a, a trigger warning, <laughs> because we know where this goes when when Coop gets gets on that trajectory, we'd love to have you email us and tell us your Genesis story. Yes, please. And you may win a movie, a super awesome, sexy movie, and we want that for you. So there you go. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to read. So there's three of us. Let's see how this stacks up. Who would consider themselves a syntrovert? Uh, That would be me. Okay, Katie. Oh, okay. Sextrovert, Jen? I mean, without question. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay, which is good because I I think I stride the line. Are you a switch? I am a switch. (laughs) Because I will often get introverted, but I have the extrovert thing of being extremely energized by being around people. You know, and introverts generally don't. But syntroverts and sextroverts, we could make up what they are. But I think we're just going to assume that they fit along the lines of introvert and extrovert just to get us started. Agreed. Well, I'd like to just, you know, this this whole topic started in the hot tub at Desire. As and ha- so many topics. As so do. many topics do, indeed. And one of the, really the, the bottom line of the whole topic was how whether you are an introvert or an extrovert or a syntrovert or a sextrovert, the idea that if you are open in the lifestyle, if you are a regular flirter of any kind, even if you're monogamous, that that we tend to become more social animals. And why is that? Mm. Why is that that whether your tendency is to gain energy from being, being around others and do a lot of talking, or you gain energy from being separate from others and yet still enjoy being social, but recognize that that uses up a bit of energy, that regardless, everyone's there bringing their game, being social. That was, that was the piece that I found so interesting is that everyone was there and happy to be there being social, whether they were an introvert or extrovert. I have a theory, Jen. Let's hear it. It's really hard to be non-monogamous if you don't go out and meet people. Like, really hard. You totally know, and, true. 
often introverts who get into relationships, especially with other introverts, uh, can become very insular and be homebodies. And there's nothing wrong with that, absolutely. But it is really, really, really hard to be non-monogamous if you don't leave your house to meet people. Agreed. I'm, I'm curious, though. This is the part that I find really fascinating as a sextrovert is, you know, I'm loving every second of that. Like, it's really fantastic to just be in the whirlwind, that social whirlwind of flirting and fun. Yet, I know that there are lots of swing setters who are those homebodies, mm-hmm. who are happy to be home, you know, on the couch reading or on the couch, you know, binging on Netflix or whatever it is. Yet, they are still there having a, a really great time at parties or whatever it is. And so, it doesn't change the fact that that's their nature. And and so I hear what you're saying, Coop, is like you kind of have to get out there and flirt because that's part of that's part of the gig. But at the same time, I'm not feeling like people are doing that under duress. But maybe they are. I don't know. Like what's Katie, the are scoop you under there? duress? Yeah. <laughs> you you have gotten very stressed out when uh we've we've been in the social space and been building the big social group i know yeah no you've definitely been there for that i i am comfortable around the people <laughs> like as the, a the group. people who are you calling the people <laughs> the people just in like the, the 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 you know collective the people in general you know i <laughs> i'm the conceptual people you are comfortable around <laughs> conceptual people i am so much more comfortable around conceptual people than real ones um <laughs> i i tend to i can't just launch into you know and i've had conversations where that has been surprising to people because i like to be very out there in very kind of controlled ways. Like I can very easily Mm. talk to a room full of people, but as soon as that talk or that panel or that thing is over, I'm fucking out of there. I can't like hang out and mingle and say hi to everybody that just listened to it. I gotta fucking go. Um, So it's not entirely under duress. I need certain things. I need an anchor. I need a person, if not a partner, at least somebody that I know and feel safe enough and know that they won't mind me being a little bit clingy until I find new people. You know, mm-hmm. I I need certain little safety nets. I'm like Linus with my blanket. I need <laughs> I need a person. And generally, if I don't know a substantial amount of the people there, I will be the person in the corner. I will sit on the floor and say, okay, there's people sitting here. I will talk to them. I can't really exist in a large space with a lot of people in that way. I tend to section myself off. Hmm. That makes it easier. For me, it's, it's directly proportional to how many people I know percentage wise, I find, or how many people know me. I've, I've taken a big shift since before, before non-monogamy and before this podcast, um, and I exploit fully the <laughs> minor benefit of being a, quote, podcast star, because I know um, the reason I do that is like at a, at a party, if I don't know many people, I'm likely to just sit and talk to whoever I do know, and that's it. And unless they draw other people in, it is very unlikely for me to wander up to a group or even just hang out with a group and do that nod thing until they notice me, you know, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or laugh, you know, standard, awkward introvert things. I'm imagining you like brick and anchor man, like cough, look over here. (laughs) (laughs) That's, that's a, a, such a great example of the differences because not that I want to enter a room full of people I don't know, because there are a lot of people I do know that I want to see in sexy places. So it's not that I'm trying to avoid all of my sexy friends that, that I, I could chat with, but I see 
when I walk into a room and I don't know most of the people, I just see it as an opportunity. Like I'm ready to rock. I'm so excited and I'm scanning the room to see like maybe who's most animated or, you know, if it's a sexy party, like who I'm attracted to immediately first scan of the room and I'm going to go up to that person and I'm going to start to chat them up and, or the group or whatever it is, like the group that's laughing the loudest. I'm like, Ooh, what is it? What's going on over there? I have to go find out what's going on over there. And I tend to go in two different directions. One is I either get so sucked in to one conversation that I essentially like disappear or, you know, we're talking like, you know, super deep for, 45 minutes, or I'm very much the social butterfly where I'm not trying to get away from people or, or cut things short, but I'm just very much like wanting to connect with as many people in the room as I can, because I do see it as that opportunity. And I find that to be fun because I love to, I love to ask people questions I, I, as much as I could talk people into an early grave. I can also listen well. So I like to ask a lot of questions because we, we roll with a lot of really interesting folks. So you hear a lot of really cool stories when you, when you're a good listener. Kate, is it stressing you out hearing her talk about that? Cause it's stressing me out a little bit. <laughs> oh is it really? God. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it's perplexing to me. Um, and and I think a lot of it has to do with self worth things, in my point of view. <laughs> no. And and from from the moans, it sounds like Katie's as well, uh, because I you know the the reason I really enjoy talking to big groups of people who are aware of the podcast is if someone comes up to me, they actually want to talk to me. And I don't have to doubt it or question it or wonder halfway through if I'm talking too much, if I'm talking too little, if I'm making weird Nazi illusions in inappropriate <laughs> spaces. Uh, well, you it, should be worried about that one. I probably should. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's my one right as a German is to make fun of our heritage. <laughs> and, it's but it's really overwhelming to me. That that question, and very rarely does it become, uh, am I talking too much? Am I because I just don't approach that. You know, I've been to, I've been to sexy events where I left because I didn't actively make, um, I didn't actively make my presence known. And uh -huh. be when you don't actively make your presence known, especially at sexy events, often people will start to assume you're not interested in making your presence known. Sure. And everybody's trying to do that polite thing where, if, well, if you're standing off to the side, maybe that's where you want to be. Maybe you don't want to be drawn in. So maybe drawing you in would overwhelm you. So maybe I shouldn't. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to hear you talk about this, Coop, because I feel a lot of those same things you were talking about. And, I just override you just them. them. I do. Yeah. I do. And I assume that at some point. file that under one of your superpowers along yeah. with the rest it, it, of it. Is, is that totally right? Her, her superpower, yeah. Is that a no, superpower it, it or is, is that just like straight up like cluelessness? Like, is that just <laughs> well, like. Well, no, it, it's not cluelessness because you're aware of it. Well, I'm aware, but I don't. Care. Like you don't I, I, care. Not caring is the superpower. That's it's the not superpower. obliviousness, it's apathy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And <laughs> no, and that's that's the wonderful thing about it. And I the reason I put myself in the middle here is I have seen a distinct evolution, which means this can be taught. <laughs> and which means that over time you can recarve the grooves. And everybody at home is like, well, fucking duh, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> But you can. If by and, you everyone know, at home, you meant me. <laughs> yes, by specifically Katie. You know, I didn't want to call you out, Katie. <laughs> but I have really uh, started to redraw those grooves. It's just a very, very difficult and painstaking process. And part of that is 
you know, it, I think it really is not caring because it's forcing yourself to do things that you probably are, well, I'm not going to say probably, that you might not like, you might not want to do, like, um, I'll go back to our desire welcome last year, Jen. Yes. Um, going up on stage fully naked on day one of the trip. Well, not fully naked. I did have rainbow thigh highs on. Right. And, and, uh, and a boa. That was basically me saying to myself, there is nothing I can be wearing or be naked or not for the rest of the trip and look more potentially foolish than I do right now. Sure. And if they like me like this, they'll probably like me fine in the rest of the mode. <laughs> so it's it's sort of like saying something really stupid right up front so you get laughed at so you don't feel worried about when they might laugh at you. Huh, yeah. Yeah, I I I guess I I mean, it's it it's so close to the same. Like we're talking about the same the same discomfort of whether it's self-acceptance or assuming other people will or won't accept us where, you know, I really feel, and I've said this so many times on the podcast in so many different ways, but if someone's not into me, that just makes room for someone who is. Well, sure, Jen, but the, the thing you miss okay. is, and I'm not going to speak for Katie. I expect her to speak for herself. I think we think there isn't somebody else. Oh. We fall, we, we slide ourselves into this weird scarcity economy by default because we say, well, here's 50 people. Maybe 10 of them will like us. Maybe five of them are available to talk. Maybe two of them want to talk. So if one of them doesn't like us, I've got one left and then fuck, the night's over. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Seriously. Okay. So, and, and, you know, I, you, you've been at a party with me where I felt this way and got all weird. And I spoke to one person and was hitting it off a little bit. And then someone else arrived who she hadn't seen in a long time. So she was all excited. And then she talked to him for a while. And I, you know, rather than take that as, Hey, she got up to talk to her friend. I should go and join and have a conversation. I took that as, okay, I guess she's not interested. Maybe I'll just go home. Yeah. 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 And I, and I can see the math and I can see those assumptions, but I just bring it back to they're completely assumptions. And, 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 and that's like a, and that's usually a, wrong. <laughs> exactly. That's my point is like, you're, you're analyzing yourself out of flirt opportunities. Like, uh -huh. you, like it's basically that, I mean, that's how I think about it is the other piece of this, though, is I heard you say should, like I should do this. It's like, okay, well, if you don't want to, then really don't. Right. But if the really the deeper want is I want to go to this party and have a great time and I do want to meet people and I do want to flirt, if that's the deeper want, then you then you reach beyond the discomfort and you you just go for it. And I feel like if you just like, you know, shut your brain off for just a little while and just sink into the experience, you're still, we're still all having the discomfort, regardless of if we're a sex extrovert or a centrovert, we're all having the discomfort. It's just a matter of, do you want to override it or don't you? And I'm not saying everyone needs to override it because they should want that. That's not it at all. I'm just saying that if you want to override it, that you said it beautifully, like that it carves some new neural pathways. Like you, you can learn that behavior and a lot of that behavior or the, the, the feeling inhibited stems from erroneous assumptions of other people's desire for you. Katie, thoughts? Yeah, see, here's... <laughs> I want to hear from the other 33 and a third percent of this podcast. I know, I'm, I'm dying to hear, totally. Listen, the, <laughs> ev everything that you're saying is correct. I am not even going to try to dispute the factual basis of all of the words that just came out of your mouth. 
<laughs> However. <laughs> do you understand the words that are coming out of her mouth? <laughs> No, I do. But listen, the wonderful thing about gingers is gingers are wonderful things. I hear you. I know that all of that shit is true. But for me, I can say these are assumptions. They're not real. They're, you know, this isn't what's actually going on. This is just this fear or this anxiety. I can be the most self-aware motherfucker in the room. And in that moment, it just doesn't matter. You know, yeah. it's just the automatic response is like, yeah, no, totally. Assumptions. We're going to freak out about them anyway. I There's this weird disconnect for me between knowing something and really internalizing it. So I can know that, you know, if this one person doesn't want to talk to me, that somebody else very well may likely want to. Because can- you're delightful and hot. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I concur. See? Okay. <laughs> So two out of the three panel members right now think you're delightful and hot, Katie. (laughs) Those are good numbers. I like them. Those are good odds. For me, though, all of these things, they're the exact same fears and thought patterns that I have when I'm not in a sexualized environment. Mm -hmm. You throw me into a room full of fully clothed people who fully intend to stay that way, and I'm going to feel the same, (laughs) you know, anxiety. I'm going to feel the same fear. Right. And, Coop, I don't lay out the numbers game as explicitly as you do, but there is that, you know, it's I'm, not... I'm it's, like John Nash in that way, just running numbers. <laughs> I know. I was, and slowly yeah. melting down. Like Nate Silver or something over here, like calculating probabilities and shit. <laughs> no, if I was calculating probabilities, I'd probably go talk to more people. <laughs> because, you know what? Newsflash, I'm rather delightful myself. And... Mm-hmm. People tend to like to talk to me. Okay, so Nate Silver mixed with, like, Stuart Smalley. I was going to say, I'm feeling a very high Stuart Smalley vibe all of a sudden. It just, <laughs> just, it just got, you know, doggone it. People yeah, like me. It. People like me. And, Coop, I have different thoughts of you. You know, it's not that I worry about talking too much. If somebody comes up to me who knows me from either here or Colonel Copia or somewhere... Mm. My fear is in not living up to the person they've been listening to. Oh, that terrifies me too. Yeah, it has nothing to do with, am I talking too much? Am I talking too little? It has to do with like, oh my God, am I having a bad day? So I'm cranky. So I'm not funny or engaging or shit. How do I turn this on? Because, you know, podcasting for me is a space. Yeah. I don't just operate in this 24 seven. It's like, all right, I'm going to, you know, I'm excited. I'm going to sink into this little mental zone or space. Um, so yeah, that's not a constant, but Jin, the part when, when you asked me if I was getting nervous listening to Ginger, I was, <laughs> but it was when she started talking about how she likes to ask people questions and I just wanted to hide under my desk. Yeah. Because I, I was going to ask you a question. No, not specifically here. Just at the idea of being in a public social space where somebody new starts asking me to tell them about myself. Dear God, huh. shoot me. Like for real. Okay. I will talk about whatever. If some random person comes up to me and asks me something really, like, thought-provoking or interesting or, like, starts a conversation, I'm down. I love that shit. Somebody standing next to me at a party who goes, so, you know, know, any of, like, your normal bullshit get-to-know-you, like, small-talky kind of chit-chat, I I, I can't function. I don't even – I don't do that. (laughs) I give these really weird, like, short answers that, I, and then I shrug afterwards usually. Like, someone will ask me what I do, and I'll be like, well, you know, I work in a hospital. So, you know, yeah. And, like, that's... Do you look at your drink a lot? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look at my drink. I fidget. I, I Maybe look, the answers it, are in the glass. <laughs> they, I'm trying to, like, read ice cubes, like tea leaves. It's really... <laughs> So, no, it's, so it's really amazing too, because yeah, I've I've seen how much people enjoy talking to you and want to talk to you, and I mean, Jin's a rock star. So oh, mm-hmm. stop! Well, you are. No, it, you are because you you act as though you you walk into a room and talk. Well, it's you don't care. <laughs> That's what it is. 
Well, That's the it, definition of how a rock star behaves. And I'm not talking about bad stuff. You're not like trashing hotel rooms, Jim. Well, I'm talking about the, yeah. the good quality that when you think, I wish I were a rock star, to be like a rock star, to party like a rock star, it is as such. It is to walk in the room and not need validation from anyone else. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, I yeah. think. That as as someone who gets nervous about it, it's because I'm afraid I will not get validation that I don't need. <laughs> but even knowing I don't need it, the fear that I won't get it or the fear that it'll somehow be taken from me, it, it outweighs things. Like I walk into the room with a stack of chits and the chits uh-huh. are worth self-value. <laughs> and I know that I have this many. And I can probably just leave with that many. <laughs> okay. The fear is somebody taking some away from me. Yeah. When I know that if I actually talk to people, some might be taken, one, two, three, but I might get a handful in return. Yeah. That's, that's the, the redirected version of this for me. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm working on every day. Yeah. Coop, if you're anything like me, then maybe. And I, I think we both know that I am. No, yeah, no, you're kind of, you know, me. Yes. With a beard. <laughs> that's that's an odd image. <laughs> I'm just gonna let that sink in. Um, <laughs> that's really all you had to say was just you, you with a beard and night and and you're out. That was it. And Mike drop. Um, no, if you're anything like me, then maybe you don't need that validation unless you're not getting it. <laughs> mm. That's my like, yeah, totally. I don't need that. I don't need that shit at all. Which is like so easy for me to say and feel and believe when I'm getting it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, listen, I'm a smoker. I can quit whenever I want. Like, fuck you. Like, that's <laughs> like, no, I don't need this. I just, you know, it just happens. Yeah. It's it, it, just listening. I mean, I I have so much respect for other people's experiences and other people's stories around being able to relate. There is a part of me, and this is going to sound all like backwards and twisted and inverse, like inside out kind of thing. You know, the idea of you know, quote unquote, being a rock star. Like it, it, it feels weird to hear that because for me, when I'm interacting with other people. And this is, I don't mean to sound like douchebaggy when I say this, but it's my for favorite me, lead in. Ever. I, okay, I, I, don't, I don't think you could, but go for okay. it. I, it's, it's kind of not about me in that interaction. Okay. Like I'm actually really like when I'm, when I'm interacting with someone and I'm doing, and maybe this is, this is the sex extrovert thing. This is, this is like where the energy comes from with me is when I, I'm interacting with someone and and I, I truth be told I only give true sincere compliments. I nothing that comes out of my mouth is ever m- meant to sound smarmy or like it's like it's a line or anything. I I just I love to compliment people. I love to notice about people what is super awesome and sexy even if I'm not attracted to them in the sense that I want to like, you know, throw them down in that moment and, you know, do them in that second. Like it's not about that. It's about it's about an interaction. It's about a connection. And when I'm in that mode, I feel like I'm giving energy and not necessarily seeking energy. I don't know if that makes sense, but so I hear what you're saying about the chits or whatever. And I guess I just, I feel like I'm in control of mine and I would love to give people some extra. And so my interactions with people aren't necessarily seeking anything, but I'm, other than I'm seeking to give. And so when I notice someone who's kind of on the sidelines of the group or whatever, and they're dressed in this rock star costume, awesome. They like look like they put in all this effort or they, you know, they're just staring into their plate of food. Now I may be scaring the hell out of people, <laughs> Katie, when I go um, up to them and start she's asking terrified. them about themselves. So, yeah. So I can oh, see well. this like it's like the Marty McFly when when his mom tries to kiss him in the car where you're like sinking back like 
Oh, yeah. So maybe I'm just scaring the hell out of people. That's entirely possible. It wouldn't be the first well, time. Jen, do you remember when you called me the first yes, time? Yes, I do. <gasps> <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I, hear, I feel like I hear the terror in your voice. I can hear it. Well, you couldn't at the time, and that was the plan. But <laughs> no, and it was the sweetest thing. Okay, so the background here is that I... Jen, we met for like a half a second at Catalyst West last year. Yes. And it was just very brief. Like, oh, hi, you're, you know, you're you. And that was when Carnal Copia was coming on. So I get this call from Ginger, which is just the most unexpected, nice, like, reach out, like, you know, and you were so friendly. You were like, hey, I just, you know, we didn't really get a chance to connect. I just really would love to know more about you and talk and like, what's your thing? And, you know, like, I just some really totally normal friendly nice thing to that effect (laughs) (laughs) and had i like a day to think of good answers i (laughs) i would have like i would have practiced she needed to do homework to to talk to you (laughs) jim yeah so no and it was totally and you didn't scare me off or away it's just in those moments i get very like deer in headlights i kind of freeze it's like oh wait what you mm -hmm? um so no i don't want you know it's not that you like scared me in any kind of bad way it's just those interactions it doesn't have to be a group thing is what i'm really getting at by bringing up that story well what's interesting to me is i remember doing that and i remember the conversation it was so much fun and (laughs) i didn't i didn't so so how the idea of your perception of deer in headlights did I didn't feel that way at all that you were that at all like you were totally just completely like I thought we were having a great time great banter you were totally on quote unquote you didn't have to practice in front of a mirror like you were <laughs> you were killing it and I and and so I feel like there's there's a a piece of this that is really interesting that I want to bring it back to is that idea of self judgment like mm-hmm. we're all doing it we're all doing it. I, I am doing the same. Am I talking too much? Am I talking too little? Am I like in their space? Am I, do they want me to just go away? Do you know, I'm doing it too, but I'm not letting it kind of get in the way of my interaction. And I also assume this is the other piece and maybe this isn't, this isn't legit, but that if somebody wants me to go away, that they'll tell me to go away in a nice way or they'll walk away and they won't come back or, you know, they'll excuse themselves and go to the bathroom and oops, they didn't find their way back to the conversation. Totally cool. But it's just interesting to me that we're all, despite the fact being centerverts and sextroverts, we're all wrestling with the same kind of self judgment and self acceptance or not. And, and it's just a matter of, is it, is it, is it a factor when we're interacting or do we just push it aside and not let it be a factor while we're interacting, but it's still there for all of us. Mm. I want everyone in our audience to think about that while we go to a commercial. (laughs) Don't stress out. We'll be back. (laughs) Unless we're not, we might just go to the bathroom and not find our way back. (laughs) Yeah, that's fair. Hey all, Cooper here to tell you the exciting news that my best-selling book, My Life on the Swing Set, Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory, is now available on Audible. As you may know, if you sign up for Audible now, you can get your first month and first audiobook free. So why not make it mine? Go to audible.mylotss.com and get eight hours of newly produced audio content now. If you crave other methods of book consumption, you can purchase the DRM-free ebook or paperback, as well as the audiobook direct from me at mylifeontheswingset.com. You know you'd rather hear than read about my epic prostate orgasm. Why not do it now? When it comes to online dating, we here at The Swing Set believe that Cassidy is the best one out there. It looks great, it's intuitive and easy to use, and it's simply full of potential sexy friends. 
Still the fastest growing online swinger dating site in the world, Cassidy has been our go-to site for the last three years. If you sign up using our link at lifeontheswingset.com slash K-A-S-I-D-I-E, you'll get some free time to explore the site. And you can decide for yourself if Cassidy is the site for you. Hope to see you there at Cassidy.com. Cooper, I have to tell you, on this diagram, yes. the bottom left picture is giving me life uh, right now. Where he's pulling it between his legs. Where it's just like pulling behind. Like. It's a 30 loins <laughs> diagram. Okay. <laughs> I told Why you. Why can't I click it? Because there's a period in front of it. Copy and paste. Oh my god! Why did you do that? I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> This is how high maintenance I am. I hit it like seven times. Here, <laughs> here's your link. <laughs> I'm already copy and pasted. it. Damn it. There your majesty. <gasps> oh. <laughs> There's more Bot- working. Bottom oh. left. has weirdly hairy legs or... Well, that, no, those are... He, he does have hairy legs. Well, he's just catchy. Those muscles. <laughs> No, those are hairy legs. It's coming off the leg. Why is there a diagram of this? I don't, because somebody wanted to explain what it was <laughs> and felt a diagram might be the best way to do it because you two clearly didn't get it from my description. No, I did. I think I did. The I bottom think. middle looks like he's shrugging. It's like, like what? Yeah. Like, what? Do I want to go yeah. to war today? I don't know. <laughs> Coop, I love when you get that tone. I don't know. Uh, uh. Whatever. <laughs> okay, you know, we should record a podcast. Huh, okay. Coop, I want to scrap that whole attraction one and just do an informational 45 minutes on growing your lines. I think that's reasonable. We at The Swing Set believe that being risk-aware and practicing safer sex makes our lifestyle exponentially better. With that in mind, we're partnering with Lucky Bloke, global condom experts, and the best online source for condoms and lube to say no to mediocre condoms and bring the most pleasurable, safer sex directly to our listeners. Go to swingsetcondoms.com to see a specially curated selection of condoms, lubes, and assortments to reintroduce variety and excitement into the protection portion of your playtime. You should especially take note of the deluxe sampler put together by us at The Swing Set for your party and date night kit. Making your condom purchase here supports both us at the Swing Set and the wonderful purveyors of safer sex, the Lucky Bloke. Swingsetcondoms.com. It's Prof. I'm here with Ginger, and we have some big news to share, Ginger. We do. We're going to desire. <laughs> again. Yes, we are. April 2016, from the 16th through the 21st, we are going to do a five day day bit of awesomeness absolutely it's a hold me over if you can't make it in november we'd love to host you in april with jv and shara from ending the sexual dark age and we're going to have a chill time not quite as many activities as our normal november trip but still lots of awesome desire fun for sure so ginger how do people get on this awesome trip with us? They should definitely email me at ginger at lifeontheswingset.com and we'll get you in touch with Jim from Shar Travel. We'd love to see you there. Join us. Yay, do it. Welcome back to Life on the Swing Set, the podcast. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm you, sorry. Are you okay, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I think I, we're, we were I'm, in the bathroom together. We were, we were checking our makeup. Thing. <laughs> doing a thing. Okay, so let me, <laughs> let me ask then, because it sounds to me, and it couldn't possibly be this easy, <laughs> as though everybody except perhaps the people with head damage <laughs> are concerned about what other people think of them are concerned about approaching people are um all these things that katie and i uh, are hyperventilating about mm-hmm. but some people are just really good at pretending they're not because that's what it sounds like jen yeah so if that's the case <laughs> 
really it's about practicing how to lie to yourself about how you feel being somewhere. I would say it's not even lying to yourself. It's about why does that even matter? Like if you, like really truly, I go, my place is like, I'm here to have fun. I don't want anything. I, I want no roadblocks to my fun. Okay, but and Jen, we're talking about the road to enlightenment, which is long <laughs> and rough. You're talking about, um, what's that place? El Dorado. <laughs> We're talking about El Dorado. The streets are paved with gold. We're okay, still over here on probably dirt, maybe some cobblestones, just enough to irritate us and maybe twist our ankle. <laughs> okay, so yeah. we need to. We need to. You know, I. You know what's great about uh, about sex reverts? They're often gregarious, so they won't mind if we focus on the poor centroverts <laughs> and how to get them. If they want to, moving on down the road. I love that. Mm -hmm. And notice how I resisted singing Ease On Down the Road. I noticed. I just need to mention that. that you get I a chip for your self-control. I get a chip. <laughs> One thing that I think can help is using the idea of leveling up skills. And awarding yourself bravery points and confidence points. And if you want to roll a d20, that's fine. <laughs> but it's, it's how you can steadily build your really armor from yourself. I, I mean, I, I like to, I'm, I want to wall off this little monster that's yelling at me all the time in my brain. Mm -hmm. which since I have just seen Roger Waters, the wall documentary in the theater this week sounds like a bad idea walling him off. But at the same time, I think it would be beneficial if I just couldn't hear him as well. I got mm -hmm. trapped in a metaphor. <laughs> I what do you that. ladies think? <laughs> It was like cask of Amontillado there for a second. Yeah. I was like, "Poor guy." And you, and you didn't help. No, I, know I, I didn't. enjoyed watching you try. I to lost your way some out. shits there. You should both know this. <laughs> no, you didn't. You were super charming while you were lost in your metaphor. <laughs> well, thank you. So, Katie, I, you, you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I was, but I could be. Um, <laughs> now you are. Look at you now, go. Now I am. Um, Ten I, points I, for Gryffindor. <laughs> Um, I, I agree that it's about a skill set. You know, Coop, I do a fair bit of just lying to myself about how I feel, hmm. you know, if nothing else than to bolster the, the false bravado to get me through the next couple of hours, which is fine sometimes. Sometimes it's just what I need. But the reason why I would recommend more skill set building <laughs> than self-deception is I've gotten myself into some really uncomfortable social situations from that. Because, you know, if I'm terrified and I'm, like, just, you know, mentally shivering in a corner, but I'm bringing all of the, you know, false extroversion that I can muster, I can talk a really, really good game. I can be totally just down for whatever's going on. And... Again, still not talking sexually. I just mean that I can talk myself into situations that I can't really back myself up on. Mm. For all of my, like, just go with the flow, no, you got this, just get through this kind of mentality. Because I'm not really being in touch with exactly where I am, sometimes I find myself way further out socially than I'm comfortable being and going, how the fuck did I get here? Hmm. So that could very well just be me, but <laughs> that's a, that's a thing. <laughs> Are you guys just going to fucking sit there in silence and watch me like slowly decompose what's going on right now? <laughs> I, I see Ginger uh, pondering finger to her lips. 
<laughs> well, I, I just want to be respectful of the fact of what you guys were saying that, that, you know, I, I, this, I just want to, it's not a better or worse scenario, right? It's just like you said, different skill sets, different interests, different, different ways of interacting. And I, I'm just super sensitive to not ever wanting to put someone in a position where they are interacting in a way that's making them so uncomfortable that they just want to exit. They want to retreat. Like I, I just, I think about it in the context of if if you're at a play party or you're on a date or whatever it is that that you're there for a reason and so i'm just like thinking of my own behaviors and how i can support people like we don't walk around um wearing these labels these t-shirts that we might be wearing someday desire um that say centrofert or sextrovert like you know it's just like it we, might help if we were i know that's what i'm i it, and and so i'm thinking of ways like it's the complimentary piece to you katie how can i assess this better and maybe be an awesome wingman to someone who needs to recharge or needs to, you know, who wants to be part of the conversation, but doesn't want to be called upon to answer a question or whatever. I just feel like, again, we're not, no one's better or worse. This is just, we're built differently. And so leaving space, especially in play spaces and in, on dates for everyone to just have a good time and bring their best game. So I don't know, that's like kind of unrelated. It's a little off to the side of what you were saying, but it's just my my perspective of not wanting to take up so much space that the centroverts can't get a word in edgewise. But also if you don't want to get a word in edgewise and you want to listen for a while to recharge, hey, that's okay too. Yeah, no, I, I hear that. Absolutely. I don't think it's a matter of whether or not you're taking up too much space because if you weren't taking up that space... I don't know that a centrovert would jump in to fill it. Sure. You know, I think getting a word in edgewise, I mean, for as socially shy and nervous as I can be, you know, and this might just be me, but like I, I can get a word in when I want to. And because those wants and needs fluctuate so greatly, you know, I'm definitely closer on the introvert side of the spectrum, but I'm not, you know past the end zone there. You know, there is kind of an ebb and flow to it. Sometimes I want to be in it. I want to be in the middle of it. I want to take up space and I'll try and do that. Sometimes I will just sit somewhere and hope nobody notices I haven't talked in a while. And that's impossible to predict. And it shouldn't be on the extroverts to identify and adjust their space accordingly. I think there's a balance of being respectful to the people around you, but also knowing that it's not your role necessarily to identify and cater to needs they haven't expressed. Right. Sure, sure, yeah. And that's very true. That's one thing that I'm never standing there thinking that somebody should be coming up to me to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Or... Even often wishing that, it's mostly, it's mostly just, damn it, why don't you go talk to people? You know, it's just going to be you and me at home. <laughs> if you don't go talk to somebody, you know, we, we could just hang out all night and you get to listen to what a, what a chump you are for not going and talking to people. That's the little man I want to wall off, by the way. Sure. So, so does that change depending on, uh, like, if you're at the grocery store or you're at a swing party or you're on vacation or you're on a date, how does that change for you guys? At the grocery store, there are no stakes whatsoever. None so what all. does that mean? Are you talking to people or are you not talking to people? Oh, not really. I mean, I'll talk to the cashier and, and bagger. Okay. But it's small talk stuff. Katie, mm -hmm. do you talk to people at the grocery store? Well, see, here's the thing. Um, I'm from New Jersey, <laughs> so mostly no. <laughs> In okay. general, we, you know, there's not a whole, you know, you've got like some friendly people. But what was really funny for me was that I just spent close to three weeks out in California. 
And one of the first things that throws me off going from where I am to there is that, you know, I get off a plane and people are suddenly like very friendly and just <laughs> talk to me for absolutely no discernible reason. I They're not trying to sell me something. They are just... I, I don't know, happened to be standing next to me and decided to talk. I don't know. Um, so those things for me, like, I'm not social out in public. I don't talk to people in the grocery store. I don't talk to people in line. Like, I want us to all stand there and look at our feet or phones or, you know, maybe mill about and look at the wall while avoiding eye contact. I don't know. That would be <laughs> preferable. Um at a party or a situation that is designed to be social, I do not typically approach people that I don't know, but I will make myself available to be approached. You know, there's kind of a an energy and a demeanor that goes into either talk to me or don't. If I'm visibly closed off, if I'm sitting with a couple people I know and my back is to the room, I... I will make attempts to make myself small and out of the way and inaccessible when I don't want to be approached. Or, you know, in contrast to, am I talking to someone but like standing in a doorway? Or am I talking to someone but with my body turned out facing the room, kind of looking at people and scanning? So there's kind of a difference in what I will do, even if I'm never really going out of my way to approach new people. There's a a difference in receptivity, I think. I don't know if that was even the question, but <laughs> no, no, it was totally, it, it it's yet again, an, an illustration. Like I am that person at the grocery store who's, I mean, I'm not like in people's space. I'm not in people, but if someone smiles at me or if they engage me, I'm totally going to engage them. Or I, again, am a question asker. I'm like, you know, if people say, you know, how is your day? I don't answer fine. I tend to offer more information and it tends to lead to more conversation because I enjoy that and that's super fun. And and especially when it comes to social places, part sexy parties, you know, that is an it just sort of a an understanding that I can do that without feeling like I'm invading someone else's quiet time or something. <laughs> but for the most part, I I also feel like I'm a pretty good listener to, you know, the nonverbals and and all of that. So I'm not I'm not trying to continue to engage someone if they don't want to stay engaged with me. I'm not. But certainly at at parties I feel like it's, it's, I've been cut loose. And so for me, it, it's, it changes my, I'm social no matter what, but it changes, especially with parties or dates that there is an explicit, Hey, this has a sexy vibe to it. I'm, I'm having fun. I'm flirting. I'm, you know, complimenting people. I'm offering to get people drinks. I'm like, whatever it is. Like, I feel like that it it changes, but it doesn't fundamentally change it. It just ratchets up the, the focus on the sexiness. So I don't know if that makes sense, but from place to place, I feel like I'm still who I am, but the content of the conversation and the flirting may be a whole different level. Mm -hmm. No, that makes total sense. I, I tend to default to a level of superficiality unless it's been made explicitly clear that that's not what you're looking for. No matter what space we're in, if you ask me how my day is, I'm going to say fine. If you ask me how, how work was or just, you know, any, anything that has a simple, easy, generally prescribed social answer, that's the one that I'll give you. Unless you, you know, unless there's some element of like, no, but like, really, like, what's going on with it? Like, how how are you? And then I'm like, oh, shit, I, I hold on, let me think about it. Um, because all of my, my flirting, my, you know, the way I engage with people in that way, 
I'm really good at that on a superficial level. I can be flirty. I can banter. I can be funny or I can do all of those things without actually (laughs) letting someone in in any capacity. So I tend to default to that because it feels safer for me, but it's not really helpful in a like connective sense. And ultimately it's, it's for me, it's weighing the question of do do they really want to know how I'm Mm, feeling mm -hmm. or are they just asking because they have nothing actually to say and they want to start a conversation or engage, but they don't want to have a deep conversation. So me talking about my financial woes isn't going to improve this interaction in any way. Sure. So for our listeners right now, what Katie and I are doing is pulling back the mask and the screaming skull is underneath. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because, you know, I've hosted roughly 220 episodes of this podcast. And I would say that Cooper Beckett in person is very close to Cooper Beckett on the podcast. So I'm not putting on an artificial persona. But I think Katie what you what you were sort of trying to get at earlier is like right now I am sitting in my most comfortable place in the world in front of my two giant monitors filled with stuff <laughs> talking into a microphone. And what I don't have when I'm in a public situation is the amazing resources of the internet and not having to look you in the eye when I think you're going to reject me for Mm -hmm. some reason. Mm -hmm. And so, Jin, when I did that thing up on the stage, the fact that it was on stage made it easier than if I was down in the group. Sure, sure, okay. Because I could sort of just turn on the podcast persona, which is something I tend to do at (sighs) events. And it's something that has actually helped me get over that stress is if I can just say, okay, well, just act like if they were a guest on the podcast, talk to them like that, you know, because people who are guests on the podcast generally are happy to be there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's the podcast persona is real. And Coop, I totally hear you. Listen, I fucking love karaoke. That's my shit. I fucking love it. Mm. (laughs) I am far more comfortable doing karaoke in a bar that has, if not a stage, a fucking platform, a box you're supposed to stand on (laughs) something. Uh, The last couple places that I did karaoke at, you know, you're just on the floor. You're a few feet away from where you were just sitting you're standing in the middle of where everyone else is standing and that is a little panic inducing for me whereas you know my karaoke bar at home has just like a little platform and it's at least enough of a separation that it doesn't feel so immersed and that's super duper helpful for me just to be out of it do you think it's because it introduces some sort of artifice that you can hold on to? I think so. I think, you know, I, it's very, this is my space. This is where I'm supposed to stand. This is, I, I like to have a microphone stand that I can physically hold an anchor to. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of need those things. And, you know, I, even still, I'm comfortable speaking to groups of people. You know, I, I have, I have a theater background. I really cut my teeth in speaking to groups of people before I was ever into any of this. You know, I used to run group therapy in a detox. That was like my jam. And I can talk in front of and to a group of people, but there has to be some element of separation for me mm-hmm. to feel safe or okay. Or at least in that sense, if I'm facilitating something, that's I'm not showing you all of me. I'm speaking to and I'm speaking about and I'm 
prompting you and I want to hear your experiences. And the podcast is, Coop, you're absolutely right. I'm sitting in my bedroom right now. I'm wearing sweatpants. I'm looking at my cat. <laughs> I, you know, like it's, it's comfortable. But even doing live recordings of the podcast are comfortable because you still have your space. Yeah. And you can choose to look at people or not, or you can look at the tops of their heads, or you can pretend they're not there, or you can kind of scan the room and then decide never to do that again. <laughs> you have options. <laughs> Are we just confusing Ginger? <laughs> she like no, I, I, I think I think she's. It's like um, it's like uh, gorillas in the mist here. <laughs> She has faded into the background to to be able to observe us as we speak the truths for the first time. Yeah. I'll admit, I'm I'm particularly intrigued, and I'm also distracted by the porn on the chat. So you know, it's that was it's... for off podcast enjoyment. Oh, okay, here, let me scroll. There, <laughs> that's better. I hadn't clicked on it, but now I want. Well, to. Well, come on. Okay, both of you click on it. Oh, I didn't have to click on it. It was it was it was, it was rolling. Just there? It was totally. Oh. Yeah, I didn't click on it. I have I have <gasps> I have live action porn in my chat right now. Oh. So it How really How many dicks is that? Well, there there are 3 I in see the picture. Three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two of which are doing the thing. Right. So I didn't mean to derail. I, I was I was equally as intrigued by what you were saying as I was by the porn. Which God, is, it looks like they're trying to build a Lincoln Log house. <laughs> what is, that is most gay porn, Katie. <sighs> really, building a Lincoln Log house could be could be the the, uh, the down low name for gay male porn. This is how slang is born. I feel like Agreed. Lincoln Log House is a gay male porn producing company that <gasps> needs to be founded. Yes. Yeah. And if By they the do, they do need to at least give us t-shirts to thank us. Lincoln because I imagine those t-shirts would be great. Agreed. Oh my gosh, yes. without, without question. <laughs> so yeah, that's... Do we, do we feel like there's uh, anything more we want to hit on this subject? Actually, I think the next podcast is going to flow very well from this one. I think so, too. And yeah. I'm not going to tell you, listeners, what it is. You'll just have to be surprised. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. Because yeah, that's, yeah, tease. That's what I am. <laughs> Clearly. Well, in honor of the fact that Dylan is on assignment... He is. He's, I, he's uh, moving from Tokyo to. Oh, don't don't tell them where he is. He's, to he's on, other areas what is he, of the San world. Diego? <laughs> he is. <laughs> I have the warrant. I know he has black hair, but I don't know what type of car he drives. Oh no! You gotta. You got that. Yeah. So, in honor of the fact that he's on assignment, I I feel like I learned a lot from you guys. Ah. So you took up the mantle. The, I did. The, the learning I, panelist. I did. It, I, and, and I'm really not, I'm really sincere about that. I, yeah. it's, it is fascinating to just learn how in all of these situations, we all gather our energy and look, look being able to look closely at other people's challenges in social situations is is really enlightening and also recognizing like, Oh yeah, I identify with a lot of that. I just maybe do different things with what I've learned about myself and neither or better or worse. It's just kind of how we're all built and what we choose, how we choose to interact. So it just, it, it really was, it, it, I, I did. I was just really intrigued <laughs> listening to both of you guys share. And I feel like I do want to know more. Like, I really do feel it's a, a valid and important conversation to have for those of us who are trying to get out there in a sexy way and meet some sexy people. And this is a good topic that we'd really love to hear from our listeners 
about. Yes. Um, I could give away some free ebooks and audiobooks of my book. If you, if you want to share um, about your sintrovert or sextrovert ness and how the lifestyle um, changes that or doesn't. And cleverly, you can email sintrovert at lifeontheswingset.com <laughs> or sextrovert at lifeontheswingset.com. And honestly, if you misspell it, it's fine. It's still coming to me. <laughs> and if if you send us something about your journey as either of these or how you perceive what we talked about or how it feels to you um i'll give you something free so pretty cool jen i also have an assignment for you <gasps> okay if if you are willing to accept it I am. Now, you don't have to. Well, I appreciate that you accepted I, it even before I asked. I almost made an Ethan Hunt um, reference just before when we were talking about Dylan. So the fact that you went Mission Impossible means we share a brain. Go on. Well, I think I think Dylan was attached to the side of a plane last time I saw him. So, okay, that's yeah. fair. Uh, so my my assignment for you is now that you know how I process groups, because I feel you may have even gotten more insight than you ever have before. Yes. We're in, in a month, we're going to be in a large group of people in Mexico. Yes. Hit me really hard when the little man is talking. Okay. okay? Well, I won't hit you. I'll just, well, just hu- see if I'll, you can we'll get him to shut up somehow. We'll hug it out. Hug it hug out, it bitch. Out. That's fine. We'll hug it out. Yeah. <laughs> Drag me into situations. Yeah. No. I, I am, uh, I am, see, so... <laughs> So I'm the I'm this introvert who desperately wants to be pulled into a situation just so he'll get over the fucking thing. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And now would be a great time to announce <gasps> officially next year, one year and one month from today, Desire Takeover, Life on the Swing Set has has grown every year. For four years now, in in our groups in Desire, the first year we had something like 22 couples. And I think that included us. It did. And we are already, I, for this year, we sold out really early. We have 75 awesome couples, and that doesn't include us this time coming to Mexico. Yes. And next year, we are taking the fucking resort over. Because it's time we own that. Yes, yeah. it is. It, I'm, uh, you know, with with. She's this, so excited she can't even form sentences. I, I can't. So with this trip still ahead of us, knowing it's going to be as epic as it's ever been, and the group will be as big as it's been. The crew for the you know for the most part. Well, this not, is the first time uh, four swing set hosts have been in the same. Resort. At the exactly. Same time. Exactly. So it just. Last year we spread us out over the continent. We did. There were some in Canada. It's kind of like the US. State of the Union. Yeah. But you know we're willing to risk it this year. <laughs> um, but the fact is, a takeover means things that we can only imagine right now. Like a takeover means ev- everywhere you go, everywhere you look, you will be seeing. Naked swing swing setters everywhere. It means the (laughs) rules of engagement have changed. Exactly. So just keep that in mind, folks, that, you know, it, it is a, a, not a big resort. We will have it all to ourselves. We won't be limited. 11 rooms. Yeah. So, yeah. So there it is. Yeah. And uh, you can, we don't have, we don't have pricing out yet, but it is coming very soon. And you can get information about it and follow for updates at lifeontheswingset.com slash desire. And this has been an amazing trip every year. And I am so excited to be able to know that everybody at the resort is a potential friend. Hey, it'll get, it'll help me with the shit. <laughs> so oh really, it's just for my benefit. 
you may get something out of it too, but I'm doing it entirely for my benefit. <laughs> so, you know. So, if you've been waiting to join us, if you've been, yeah. if, if you're like, you know, I don't know, it sounds really amazing, but, you know, there's only 75 couples. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think anybody's saying there's only 75 couples? Because that's no. kind of weird. No, I don't. But, okay. but hang with me just for a second. I'm with, then, you. I'm with you always. Okay, so there we go. So you get you get the whole resort. You get 111 couples. You get it, it, it's 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 your time. It's your time. It, it, it is it is your time. Your time has arrived. <laughs> That's come, their time up there. Right. So, so this is yeah. This is yours. Yes. So come with us to paradise. Yes. And we have a review. Ginger, <gasps> would you like to read the review? I love reading reviews. Yes. So here we go. Funny, educated, and awesome. Life on the swing set keeps me coming back for many reasons. There are views on everything from the minutia of ethics in non-monogamy to the etiquette of asking consent in a nude hot tub. And yes, even Cooper's political rants are well- Validation. <laughs> <laughs> There it you feels go. so good. <laughs> Are well explained and well thought out. But the prime reason I can't wait for each new episode to drop is that the hosts have fun while still educating us about swinging. You can get dry bullet points on how-to articles from any number of sexuality resources that only scratch the surface of swinging because it might bring in a few more website hits. But here on the swing set, it's as if we are old friends sitting around a table on the patio or maybe lounging on a beach bed, drinking melon balls. Oh, no, no melon balls no, for no, Cooper, no, 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 but no maybe other people can drink Cooper. the melon balls. Every, but. I'm, I'm not outlawing melon balls. Even at our takeover, I'm not outlawing melon balls entirely. You can have one. No, I, I, I can't. Okay, so that's fair. Okay, so no melon balls for Coop, but everybody else have at it. I'm back to the review. And having an honest and earnest conversation about the lifestyle. The conversations on the podcast are punctuated with funny stories and personal anecdotes that keep me laughing while I'm still learning. Cooper, Dylan, the prof, Shira, Ginger, Miko, and Katie do a great job here. And when it ends, as all good things inevitably do, I will shed a tear in its honor. Aw. Wow. I'm all the clumped. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for that review. We are trying to read reviews from iTunes every week if we can. Um, please do review us on iTunes. It really helps us with our rankings, especially as a 226 episode old show. Uh, we are no longer in the new and exciting category because, you know, that was like a month. So if you could review us, that helps us be in the what's hot category, which helps more people find us. And, uh, you know, that's awesome. And if you put a plug for yourself in your review, we'll probably read it. <laughs> totally. We are whores <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, and other ways. Too. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. So you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the swing set. Follow us on Twitter at Cooper S. Beckett, at Ginger and the Prof, and at that Katie Mack. Check out this podcast, daily blogs, articles, and toy reviews on our website at life on the swing set.com and on our site's Twitter feed at on the swing set. We are currently looking for writers of blogs and articles. For the website, if you are interested in becoming a blogger at Life on the Swing Set, email Miko at lifeontheswingset.com and put submission in the title. She'll get very excited that you're submitting to her. <laughs> you can email us at contact at lifeontheswingset.com uh, or any other fucking thing, as I've mentioned before. Everything that doesn't have an assigned mailbox goes to me. So be creative. Don't just use a name. It might go to somebody, and then you'll have to explain that. <laughs> Lost myself. Give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. Send us a text at 573-55-SWING. That's 573-557-9464. Little secret, that also goes to me. <laughs> so we know you out there in Swing Set Land buy a lot of condoms. 
We do too. You know, when you have a lot of sex, lots of condoms are good. So why not buy them from swingsetcondoms.com, which works through the Lucky Bloke, the best online reseller of condoms, and it supports this podcast. And, you know, buying condoms and supporting us? Come on. So you can support us with our Patreon, buying a shirt, or leaving us a tip at lifeontheswingset.com slash support. You can find our other great podcasts like The Gentle Pervert Social Club, Intellectual Foreplay, The Kinky Geeks, Eat the Rudecast, a damn good podcast about Twin Peaks, Sex at a Go-Go, and the Tell Me Something Good podcast at swingset.fm or on our free Android app. And... Don't forget, you can buy Cooper's amazing book, My Life on the Swing Set Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory, as an ebook, paperback, or audiobook, or all of the above at yes. mylifeontheswingset.com. <laughs> Thank you for the lovely plug, June. It's like, it's like I got two <laughs> chits back. That's what I'm here for. I think I may have balanced out the. Are you Excellent. in the black on chips? I don't know that I'm in the black. I might be at zero. I might be at the at the the medium. I think you're in, in the black. Zero. I think you're both in the black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good job, Katie. <laughs> you get ten uh, terror reduction points. <laughs> huh? <gasps> No. Oh my, no, no, I can't. I can't even start. I'm like... Roll a D8 for your modifier. Yes! <laughs> I just feel like a natural D20 on charisma should mean something. It should mean something. <laughs> Thanks for swinging by. <laughs> Have a sexy business? Love the swing set? Let's put these two great things together. The Swing Set Network has advertising and sponsorship packages available for our websites and podcasts. Email advertising at lifeontheswingset.com for more information. Thanks. That was awesome. It's like my nerd just flopped out right at the end there. <laughs> was your fly was you your flopped fly it out open? on the table. Your fly yeah, my, was open and your nerd flopped my, out? My nerd flopped out like Lenny Kravitz's dick. <laughs> Well, it depends. He's in a hotel room, so if he scored him... Well, so of course he'll be clinking ice cubes in a hotel room. Well, oh, yeah, I suppose. Because that's how he rolls. I mean... That is true. I cannot... I can't picture him in a hotel room without a drink. There you go. There you no, go. I mean, he's basically Don Draper. <laughs> <laughs> basically. I have to say, in my, like, absolutely minimal exposure to prop in real life... Okay. <laughs> That sounds about right. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> it was just like him in the hotel room standing in the corner with a drink looking concerned about something while you all podcasted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was actually concerned. I have a hunch that might just be what his face looks like. Jin, I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Mildly I, I, concerned. Yeah, he, he may have been concerned. He gets concerned occasionally. He not, goes into not. into like professional mode when we're when we're working on swing set business. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh my god! Like everybody's in lingerie. You're passing around the giant talking dick, and yeah, Prof totally. is just looking like he's thinking about yeah. something very intently. Yeah, Prof is planning uh, monetization strategies. Exactly. And- That's totally what he's doing. <laughs> totally. He's like 2017. We're gonna own desire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tina Horn, author of Love Not Given Lightly, and host of the Wired People Into That podcast, and you're listening to a Swingset podcast at swingset.fm.